So let's start at the beginning. We are talking about Stonehenge. Stonehenge. Stone... Henge. Now, we all know what a stone is, but what on earth is a henge? Have you ever thought about that? Be honest. I bet you've said Stonehenge before and you've imagined it without even considering the second half of the word. Well, a henge is a circular ditch that has been dug out and then has a raised bank around the outside. Stonehenge is called Stonehenge due to the inner circle of stones inside of the henge. There are actually over 500 henges throughout the UK and the word originally comes from the name Stonehenge. Henge meant hang in Old English and due to Stonehenge's unique formation it gained this name. Strangely though, Stonehenge isn't even the oldest henge in the UK, so it seems odd the word comes from there. But then again, nothing about Stonehenge is simple, obvious or easy. We know the age of construction of Stonehenge because we discovered the animal bones that were used to dig the henge. And they were carbon dated to 3100 BC. So what would happen is they'd use antlers like a fork to break the earth up and then larger bones to shovel the earth away. Y okay, I get it. Enough about henges. What about the stones? Well, there are two types of stone at Stonehenge. The blue stones and the sarsen stones. The blue stones were the first to arrive coming to the site around 4,600 years ago. The blue stones are the smaller ones, which make up the inner circle of stones and weigh around about two to four tons. They are called blue stones as if you were to cut one open, a fresh cut would give off a bluish hue. But the most incredible thing about them is that they are not local. They are, in fact, from the Priscelli Hills, which is 150 miles, or 250 kilometres if you prefer, away in Wales. But instead of dragging them the whole way, we actually believe they would have been brought by flat bottom boats along the estuaries of the River Avon to a few kilometres away, and then dragged for the final distance. Today, only 27 blue stones remain, but we believe it would have originally been 80. Did you know that the Avon is an Old English word? It means river. So, those stones were brought up the river... River. Gosh, aren't us English sophisticated? Of course, when we imagine Stonehenge, let's be honest. We don't imagine the henge or the smaller stones, but instead the large ones, the sarsen stones. And these are the big ones. Arriving around 4,200 years ago, the tallest stands at nine meters and the heaviest doesn't weigh up to four tons, but is 36 tons. Now, these stones are from a closer source, a quarry in the Marlborough Downs. That's about 20 miles, or 32 kilometres if you prefer, from where they stand today. However, these would have been dragged the entire distance. We believe this would have been done by rolling the stones along logs or possibly creating tracks like a train, as the process was then repeated up to 90 times. If you are fortunate enough to stand next to one of these sarsen stones, then you'll immediately appreciate the incredible amount of effort, energy and endeavour it took to complete the task. In fact, Salisbury University did some tests and they believe it would take 200 strong, able-bodied men and women nine weeks to drag one of the stones that distance. 
But notice, I did say they believe it would take that long, as they did try to do the experiment, but didn't receive enough volunteers. So, why was Stonehenge built? The truth is, we don't actually know. Well, not for certain anyway, as there are no written records, so all we can do is theorise. There are many theories that exist, which I encourage you to look into in your own time, but here's a few to get you started. Theories such as it being built to resemble a celestial orb, or, or that it was built for its special acoustic abilities. Some say that it falls onto old ley lines, a pseudoscience from the 1950s where straight lines across the globe are connected via places of historic, religious or cultural significance. A medieval theory is that Stonehenge was built originally in Ireland by giants and then it got magicked over to England by the magician Merlin and is in fact King Arthur's round table. We don't tend to use that theory anymore though. Maybe it was an ancient health spa or even a team building exercise that got out of hand. Or quite simply, it is just obviously a landing site for aliens. But what about druids? I hear you ask in a proud and happy voice. Well, they certainly did not build Stonehenge as they existed 2,000 years ago, so it was already over 3,000 years old by the time they came along. In fact, we are closer today to the Druids in time than they were to the building of Stonehenge. The reason we believed they built Stonehenge is very simple. It's because for centuries they were the oldest civilization we knew of, so naturally we assumed it was them, but we know much more now. Some argue that the Druids did use it for human sacrifice, and, well, maybe they did. There are Roman accounts of this happening, but I ask you, please do bear in mind that those Roman accounts were written by Romans in Rome, who had never visited the country, but were writing to explain about how barbaric we were and why we deserved to be invaded. Which is probably true, actually. One thing that we do know about Stonehenge is that there is a strong link to death in the area. Around the site of Stonehenge, there are many burial mounds called barrows. In fact, in the first 500 years of Stonehenge's life, there were around 150 burials that took place there. Someone is even buried in the centre of the stones. Indeed, 5,000 years ago was the time when we as human beings began burying and remembering the dead. So, quite possibly, Stonehenge was used as a burial site. However, that's not our main theory. So, we believe Stonehenge is actually a very large clock. Maybe clock's not the right word. Maybe I should say calendar. Ooh, doesn't that sound exciting? <laughs> Let me explain. If you were to stand in the centre of Stonehenge on the morning of the summer solstice, the 21st of June, the longest day of the year, and look to the heel stone, a large sarsen stone 60 metres from the main circle, you shall see the sun rise directly behind it. Six months later, stand in that same spot on the winter solstice, the shortest day of the year, the 21st of December. And if you're looking to the heel stone, turn 180 degrees behind you and you shall see the sun set, marking the end of the shortest day of the year. These stones also link up to the spring and autumn equinoxes, clearly marking the four seasons of the year. This is all far too much to merely be a coincidence. So, who built Stonehenge and why did they care about the seasons? 
Well, thanks to a new discovery in April 2019, we uncovered that the builders of Stonehenge were not ancient Britons, but in fact, ancient Iberians from modern day Spain and Portugal. These people were known for building great monolithic structures, which is what Stonehenge is. They were also known for being farmers. Up until 5,000 years ago, in Britain, we were hunter-gatherers. That's how we got our food. At this point in history, though, we evolved to become farmers. But the truth is, we didn't invent these techniques. We were taught them by our European counterparts. Therefore, learning about and understanding the seasons would have been incredibly important for the betterment of our species. These civilizations then integrated with one another, forming parts of our genetic DNA today. A startling discovery which proves that not only are we still learning so much about these mysterious stones, but also about our own history. We can only wonder at what other secrets are hidden within Stonehenge. During the late 1960s and 1970s, new modern age druids would come to Stonehenge to celebrate the summer solstice. Free love and a, a more at one with the world way of life, partying through the night until the sun rises the next morning. Probably though behind thick cloud. These parties turned festival-like and became such a hotbed for activity that the police shut the parties down. But they were reinstated in the 2000s and are still attended by up to 36 thousand people each year. Also, there are parties for the winter solstice too, and each December you can find literally some people at Stonehenge celebrating the shortest day of the year. Probably just a coincidence about the weather. Today, Stonehenge is one of the UK's most iconic sites popular amongst visitors from around the world. While I hope this video experience has given you a taste of what there is to learn about Stonehenge, far more awaits you on your visit to these magical stones. If you'd like to learn more about Stonehenge, there are plenty of stories and videos available online. Alternatively, once the current lockdown restrictions have been lifted, we'd recommend a visit to the Magical Stones. Our small but significant country has a lot to offer, and Golden Tours can help guide you through this and many more of our historical sites. Thank you for watching, and please do check back for more virtual experiences on our website.